buckle in everyone because we're doing moon druid now moon druid is a tough cookie to optimize um because there are so many different creatures uh and depending on you know how it's a trade-off between how powerful the creature is and how much of an investment you're willing to go into moon druid with two levels you can get up to level one uh creatures we're gonna ignore those there's not really many uh seer one enemies i mean beasts that are really gonna optimize so we need to go at least six levels because it's six level druid we can be a, a cr2 creature um well what options do we have well we have the the rhino um which does 2d8 plus 5 base damage and then if it's a charge deck that's 2d8 extra right so it's a pretty big singular attack which means if we tack on things like extra attack we're going to be able to get more mileage out of that and while we're not going to be able to charge every attack it's still pretty substantial um then there's the elk which only does 2d6 <clears throat> plus 4 and then plus 2d6 charge if they hit but if that hit knocks enemy prone, they can make a 48 plus 4 attack against prone targets. But the DC is only 13. So right now it looks like Rhino is the better option. But there's one more. The Closet Cultist, which does uh, 3d6 plus 2 damage on a hit. And then an additional 3d6 uh, if they dive um, a certain amount of feet before they attack. So we're going to look at that. First, so which means we have to go six levels in uh, Moon Druid, right? Um, as as most of you know, Moon Druids. Um, first, we get spell casting. Uh, there's not a lot of first level um, spells that are going to help us with Druid. Um, just things like um, cantrips, like poison spray is a, a good one at early levels because um, uh, it does a lot of damage. For our race, we're going to go ASMR. No surprise, there we go uh, pretty much every time. Um, because we get, you know, that extra uh, level damage once per turn. And then um, uh, we can just put the stats wherever we want, right? So we're Druid. But we don't really need Great Wisdom because we're not a spellcaster. We're, we're mostly just dealing damage, right? So we're going to want to have strength or dex higher. Um, honestly, it doesn't matter a ton, um, because we're, mo again, we're using, like, the animal stats, so, honestly, constitution is probably, you, because we're gonna go Echo Knight for a lot of things, because it just, it's another free attack, so, honestly, it's better to make our constitution 17 to start, I know it's super weird, but like being able to main concentration having more health it's just they're all great for wild shape um and then just uh make dex and wisdom at least 13 and then um charisma at least 13. um and really do with the others as well special spells you have things like absorb elements which is just a great combat spell because it both reduces damage um, for purposes of holding concentration and then also increases your melee attack which is great um then we get the second level Druid, where we pick up Druid subclass, of course, we're going to go Moon, um, which basically, of course, uh, starting at that level, we can um, be up to a CR1 creature, and then every three levels we get, um, so basically we can Wild Shape and, uh, a CR equal to our level divided by three, right? So level six, it's going to be CR2, level nine, CR3, etc. Um, then... Uh, a third, oh, then we can also spend a spell slot to regain HP, which is nice. <laughs> then we go third level, we get second level spells. Um, again, uh, spike growth is a great one, but that's for specific builds. We're not really going into that this time. Um, kind of lackluster in the department. Again, it's really like third level when things start to get spicy. Fifth level, we get third level spells. Um, Druids don't get haste or um, spirit shroud, which is a bummer. Which means there is not a lot of spells that help us with combat. Um, 
Fortunately, we're gonna multi-class, so not a huge issue. Um, sixth level, finally, we can turn to a quasi-cultus, right? So, what, okay, what are we doing for concentration at this? We don't have any official level three spells. We do have the Rakados, Rakados cultist background, um, as an option to get haste. So we're gonna do that and get haste, right? So at sixth level, we can make two attacks because we don't have extra attacks. So we're just making two attacks with the quasi cultist and with haste, we'll have enough movement speed to make both of those into dive attacks. So, um, it's going to be 3d6 plus 2 plus 3d6 for both of those. So that's th 50 damage. Pretty nice, kind of on par with what we want here. Now, what are we going to go to into? Um, we're going to go on Hexblade. Uh, it's, for optimized builds, Hexblade is great. Um, because, first of all, we have nothing for concentration at this point, so just scrubbing Hex is going to be nice, plus Shield um, is just a great spell. Um, and we get hex fight scores. So at this point, our proficiency bonus is plus three, which means basically we're making, we don't have extra attack yet either. Though. So it's quasi cultists for only making one attack. Now we're going to go into um, Echo Knight. Now, um, first level fighters, um, just get a second wind, which is nice, because uh, we don't have anything to do with the bonus section yet. Um, then second uh, level, we get action surge, which is great for, for Nova Belt, it's just good to have. And third level, we get our subclass, which is going to be Echo Knight. Um, at this point, uh, because we have our constitution uh, modifiers plus four from our ASI at level four, we uh, can make four attacks with our Echo, which is like, considering combat is normally four to six rounds on average, um, we're pretty much gonna get that extra attack each time, right? So at this point, we are level 10, um, and we're dealing three, six, plus two, plus um, four from our Hexblade's Curse, and then plus three, six again. So it's gonna be three times. So there's gonna be 63 damage from our dice, and then on average, and then 18 normally. So it's going to be um, 81 damage, which is pretty sweet, um, for level 10, it's all right. So, now, here's where things get a little interesting. We still have, um, we still have a total of 10 levels left, and there's a lot we can do with this. Um, we can go... We can go five into cleric. Um, so, okay, we start in cleric, right? We, we get, we're gonna choose war cleric, which means this would be why, if we did this, go this route, this way, we wanna have wisdom second, because it means we get to make a number of attacks with their bonus action equal to our wisdom modifier, right? So, um, because we haven't used our bonus action yet. So this would give us another attack each turn, so we'd be having four at this point, um, and we still don't even have extra attack. Um, so, uh, that's what we're gonna get first level. The second level, War Cleric, they just get the plus 10 uh, to hit. Third level Cleric, we get third level spells. Um, spiritual Weapon is great, but we already, really have, a, we already have a bonus action, uh, so not really gonna take anything there. Fourth level, we finally get a, a second ASI. I'm gonna bump that. Either Wisdom up to be a plus three modifier, or Constitution up to uh, plus five. Then we have, or actually you can do both. Anyways, um, then we have uh, fifth level. And this is important because we get Spirit Shroud. At this point, okay, what, what, what level of caster are we? Well, we are six Druid and three, uh, and five um, cleric, which means we're 11th level caster, which means we get six level spells, which means casting at a fifth level would be 2d8 damage, right? Um, is that better than haste, though, is the question. So we're gonna compare at the end, right? Um, this point, we still don't have extra attack, uh, so, we're gonna we're gonna do something weird. 
Um, we're going to go 5 into Hunter Ranger. Now, this is very conditional. Actually, there's two ways you can do this. One way is to go two more into Echo Knight to get extra attack. We get it earlier, and we get another ASI. Downside is we get less spell levels, right? If we go into Ranger, um, full five, we're going to get uh, we're going to get more just more than just one spell level, which is nice. Um, so it depends on what you want there. Let, let's okay. Why are we going into Ranger? Okay, so Rangers to start. Um, we've talked about it. You always want to go Tasha's, so we get those proficiencies. Um, and we get favorite foe that we're not gonna really even use it. Then we get another fighting style. Um, so actually, we didn't talk about the first fighting style. Um, as a fighter, honestly, there's not a ton of uh, attack options for that. Um, honestly, what you could do is just do um, unarmed, which might work for some. Uh, it's tricky. It's tricky. Honestly, just go wherever you want. Because we're not using heavy weapons. We're not attacking with one hand. We don't really need two weapons fighting. Just take, like, the extra AC or something. Um, or the Battlemaster one. Let's go with Ranger. Oh, uh, we could go Fey Ranger, which would give us a D4 per attack. The only thing is we're also going Hexblade. This means that, well... Um, we want to attack one target, and we only benefit from that D6 on D4 on multiple targets if we're, you know, attacking multiple targets. So that's not going to work. But we have Hunter. Hunter, hands down, is the best because, one, we're dealing a D8 as a baseline if we choose Colossus there, um, rather than the D6 from Stormkeeper or um monster hunter and all that right and then there's the conditional this isn't assured there's two enemies within five feet of each other you can attack the second one right so um potentially an extra attack fourth level we'll get another asi either way we get an asi right um whether it be seven well, yeah so honestly it's just better to go five Ranger and five, you know, yeah, it's just the same. Um, and then fifth level Ranger, we get extra attack. So, as a whole, um, that's going to mean we're going to have uh, two more full caster slots. We're going to be 13 level caster, which means we have seven level slots, which means a 3d8 damage, right? So in this in this version where we don't use haste, we're making one normal attack, one extra attack, one echo attack. One bonus action attack from War Cleric and potentially an attack from Hunter Ranger. Okay. Well, this means five attacks, each of which are 3d6 plus two, 3d6 um, plus six from proficiency bonus. Oh, here's the thing we're not going to be able to charge on every attack. With haste, that is going to give us a movement speed of way higher but we're not going to have that if we're doing spirit trap we do have an echo though so we, we with our normal movement speed we can get in two dives right and we can just have the echo and then we can but we don't have to back off because we can charge bamf to an echo position charge again um and that's all we're going to really get unfortunately, which is a huge downer of not having that uh, other option, right? Oh, we do have Long Strider, which is going to boost our speed. Like, there's ways to get... I would say if you're pushing it, we can get in three. Because if there's another enemy there with the dive, like, you don't have to... <sighs> it's stretching it, but we're going to go three. Um, so it's going to be 3d6 plus two plus six from... Um, Hexblade plus 3d6, 3d8 from Shroud, and um, plus, like, added on to that total. 
is 20 from ASMR, um, then plus um, 9d6 from our charge damage as a total. That's going to be a total of 196 damage. Though, um, again, we're not always going to get that extra attack um, from having an enemy within five feet. So if we choose the other hunter ranger option instead, that's just going to be um, only 175 damage, which is still really solid. So, but what if we're doing haste? Hunter ranger, well, we don't need to go five in cleric, we only need to go one in cleric. So that's the first change. So we're only 11 in, which leaves us with a lot more levels. And I'm going to go, we're going to go 7 into Oathbreaker. Now, um, normally we don't get to do this fun stuff because uh, we don't have the availability of levels, but because the amount of Moondrude we're going to into is so little, we can have some fun with it. So, um, well, what does that give us? Well, Paladin's starting out. Get lay in hands, we get a fighting style, we get smites. None of them are gonna help us in terms of just calculating consistent damage, right? Level three, we get Oathbreaker, channel of any of these. Well, awesome, being able to control undead, and um, all that aren't helpful in terms of damage again. Um, fifth level, we get extra attack because we, uh, we actually don't have it yet again. Um, uh, fourth level, we get ASI. Same as usual here. And then um, now, uh, six level we get our aura protection, which gets great with saves, but not going to help us in terms of damage. Finally, seventh level we get our aura of hate, which allows us to deal extra damage equal to a charisma modifier um, per uh, level, I um, mean, um, per attack. So. Let's see, with this build, we would want to make Charisma the highest, right? So we have we have two levels just floating around. So we have one ASI from Moon. We can boost Echo to four, so that's two ASIs. Oathbreaker to eight, three ASI, ASIs, um, which means that starting out at like 17 Charisma, and 15 constitution, um, we can boost that to 16 and 18 um, with one. Second, we can boost wisdom up to 16. Um, and the third one, we can boost, we can boost either con const, I would say we'd want to have wisdom at four. So, we're going to be doing four damage with Charisma, which is pretty nice. Um, so all in all, we have Haste, so it's an extra time. So we have a way higher movement speed with Haste, which means we can make four dive attacks, um, which is wonderful out of our five attacks total, essentially, right? This is going to be, um, again, so it's going to be 15 D6, plus 12d6 from our dive, um, 12 from the two, four from charisma, and then um, six from x curse, so it's gonna be 12 each attack, um, and then 20 from our ASMR bonus. 171, so about on par if we weren't to get that hunter ranger um, extra attack in. Now, a century, the thing is, right, with haste, it means that more, we'll want to be doing more damage each attack to, than, rather than more attacks, rather with, um, with Shroud Up, you, you already have high damage, so you want to get more attacks up. We just can't get that damage up. There's not enough sources, which is why Spray Shroud is better. Though, that's not the only type of creature we can do. Um, I did skip over one CR1 creature that could be worth it. This is the um, Dianakis. I mean, there's a, a CR1 creature we can be at second level, uh, Druid, 
which has three attacks. Now, um, as a base, right? So extra attack is completely useless, which means severe trout is the way to go um, most of the time because we we already have high damage. We already have high a number of attacks but low damage, right? So we're gonna go five into war cleric, as we mentioned. It's gonna give us a bonus action attack. So we're going to be making um, four attacks at this point. Uh, and then we can go three Echo again. So our spread is two Druid, five Cleric, which is going to give us that extra attack, and Shroud, and then three Echo. So we're making five attacks in total already, which is great. One Hex Wave, because you always got to go Hex Blade. Um, at this point, we are 11 levels in. Now, we don't have enough spell levels, right? Seven into Oathbreaker again is going to put us at um, 18 levels in, right? So what's our total spell level? Two fulls levels from Druid, five from a Cleric, and then we get three from um, Oathbreaker. This is 10 total. We only have two levels more. It's only going to put us at 12, which isn't going to be high enough to get seventh. So, no Oathbreaker. No Oathbreaker. We need to have seven level spells to be worth it. So, we're going to try. We're going to just do Hunter again. Um, Serene Hunter. Uh, which is going to put us at 14 levels in. Honestly, here's the tricky part, because there's not a lot of other ways we can get high damage. Um, so, honestly, yeah, if we, so we have six decks at this point. And then if you go two more to Druid, we're going to get, um, at this point, our full spell levels is going to be, um, we can go one more to Ranger, so it's going to give us second level spells and then another ASI, right? So two plus uh, five Druid plus five Boar, so it's 12 total. Um, still not enough, so just one more Druid. Or cleric, and it's gonna give us complete. Honestly, at this point, it's better not to go more druid and instead go war cleric because if we go eight in the war cleric, we're gonna get that extra d8 once per turn, right? So, eight war cleric, two druid, um, three echo, 13, a one hex blade, 14, um, three ranger, 17. I'll have to go with well, these ones uh, into a full caster to make that high enough for level sevens, right? So we have a really good ASI range, better than usual. Um, and so we're making five to six attacks, depending on what we can do for Ranger. Altogether, um, that's going to be 181 damage because our base attack with the Dianacus is just a D8 plus two. Um, so it's adequate um and even less without hunter ranger which is unfortunate so what if we go higher well um then we'd be going nine levels into moon druid and the best option for that is the scorpion the scorpion makes four attacks as a base and one of those is really big um two claws which are just uh, D8 plus 2, um, and then the Sting, which is 1 D8 plus 2, and then they make a con save, taking 40 10 on a fail, or half on a success. So even if they succeed, that's, um, pretty hefty damage. Um, so, 
we need to go at least nine into Druid, which means we get two A sides in there, which is nice. Three Echo as usual, so we're 12 levels in. One Hexblade, 13. One War Cleric, 14, which means we have six levels left. All right. Again, we could go the Hunter strategy, which is um, going to put us at 17 total. Um, now, at this point, it's probably best just to round out your modifiers. Um, another into Echo Knight and Hunter and um, so on, just to get those, um, those ASIs, because there's not really much we can do with those floating levels. Um, well, what does this mean? Well, every attack that's not the base one, we can just do the biggest one, the sting attack, right? So we're making three attacks as a base, then we're making an echo attack, which is gonna be a big sting. Um, so it's two stings and then two normal attacks. Bonus action, we're gonna sting again. So that's gonna be three stings, two normals, and then if we get off hunter attack, be four stings and then two normal attacks right um so <clears throat> we don't have a concentration spell yet we can of course just do rocket again and get haste which is going to be another sting attack probably the best option honestly so if we're doing haste it's going to be 123 if they succeed all of their poison, so that's gonna be the, that kind of minimum. 148 if they fail all of them, and we do get that hunters in. Um, if we use spirit trout instead, it's gonna be 169 if there's no hunters involved and they fail all of them. And then 202 if the, we do get the hunters attack off. Um, and then they just get ludicrous. We get almost a 250 with that last one if they do. Uh, sorry, that's success, not if they fail. If they fail, then it's higher. So if they succeed all of them, those are the numbers. If they fail, it's way higher. But it's DC 12, I'm not going to account for it. So we're, it's very varying uh, based off of what you do. So spiritual is way better than haste in this case. At this point, we really don't benefit from going anything higher than three into um I mean, <sighs> CR so it's nine into our druid levels. If we go 18 levels in druid and two levels into sorcerer, we can um and then get metamagic adapt we have and then turn convert some of our sorcery points or spell levels into sorcery points we can get um, we can quicken green flame blade because we can do that, um, which means that bronze source tax can be 68 plus 5 plus 3d8 for the green flame blade, and then if we get another target, it's higher, and then quicken that again, and then haste for another 68 plus 5 and plus 20 from ASMR is 143 damage which is mm, better than some some of uh, decent but we've done a lot better um moon druid varies so much and this is kind of just a brief segment of what it can do in terms of i think if you are looking at straight dpr in terms of just using the attacks but like, I would say the biggest limitation is because, like, you, you, you don't have, you have terribly low, um, modifiers, physical modifiers, which is a bummer, um, so that's the big thing, um, and you can't, you can't add a lot in that, but you don't really need to just because of so many of the creative things you can do. And the amount of extra levels you have just to try different damage methods which is pretty uh, fantastic so overall um 
Moon Druid is one of the one of the most fun, at least for me, when I was making this to to try out different damage types because of that variety. Um, so I def uh, I definitely say if you're looking for a DPR, give give some of these a try. Um, this is Sean from Dodecadention signing out.